Um, so um, my lab at CCSD focuses on combining technology development um, and basic biology in order to learn how cells use chromatin in order to regulate and respond to cues from the environment. Today, I want to tell you about um, a collaboration with Covaris uh, where we are trying to improve the process of chip sequencing such that it would allow systematic screening of small molecules or future um, drug discovery or um, diagnostics. Um, so, in general, my plan is to give a short outline, um, a short introduction of the process, um, talk a bit about our automated chip sequencing and how we are developing and optimizing the AFA accelerated chip sequencing process. Um, as you're all familiar with that, um, the, the DNA is wrapped around um, nucleosomes that allow um, the Type regulation of chromatin, and in a way, I like to envision it as if the cells is controlling gene expression and responses to cues for the environment by <clears throat> having some kind of layers of chromatin going all, anywhere from DNA methylation to the compaction of the nucleosomes to the variety of system modifications, and then the association with the uh, nuclear lamina. Um, and another way to look at it is perhaps as if the cells have some kind of dashboard that allows them to control which promoters are going to be inactive, poised, or active, which enhancers are going to be inactive, poised, or active, and which regions, other regulatory regions, are going to be on um, large-scale large, large repression, either stably or transient. Um, chip sequencing, which has been uh, one of the highly used procedures um, for learning about um, the association of DNA uh, binding proteins um, with the genome, in general, what um, is, is happening is that we take cross-linked cells and then uh, we, which allows us to take a protein and covalently bind it to the DNA, we shear the the chromatin, the DNA and associated proteins into small fragments, we take an antibody that specifically recognizes the protein of interest or a modification of this protein, and then we pull the, this antibody, which in turn pulls the protein that is linked to the DNA, and this allows us to fractionate the genome into what was in association with this protein of interest and the rest of the genome. And this procedure was um, invented around 40 years ago, the chip itself, and the chip sequencing was um, in, in, like initiated around in 2007. There are a variety of other options that are coming together, um, but still chip sequencing is one of the most um, useful approaches for learning about DNA-associated um, proteins. Um, we've been working for quite a while <clears throat> to take the process of chip sequencing and make it as robust and as scalable by combining it with automation. Um, so initially, we took the step of taking um, samples and making libraries out of them with automation, and this allowed us to screen a variety of conditions and validate which conditions are the best and, and look at at uh, how cells go through response to um, cues for the environment. Um, we further next took, if these are the steps of the chip sequencing process, which has multiple steps and makes it really difficult to, um, to evaluate and optimize, we took these processes and as shaded in gray, we managed to automate each and every of these steps where we take cross-linked samples, and we can put them through a liquid handler, go through all the steps um, to the part that we have libraries that we can then sequence, um, and makes it much more robust and reproducible. Uh, we use this procedure to uh, evaluate uh, conditions where we were trying to optimize if um, we can use monoclonal antibodies 
for chip sequencing, again, with the idea of making it as robust and reproducible, and this was published uh, several years ago. Um, here, we wanted to take this a, a step further because the process of chip sequencing from cross-link samples all the way to sequencing takes around two days, even when we use automation. Um, and part of the long uh, uh, component is the intubation overnight that we have here. So we wanted to see if by teaming with Covaris, we can expedite this process and perhaps even improve it. And Covaris um, approach built on a transducer that allows a focused um, sonic wave to, with a, without any contact to the sample, and apart from shearing with specific conditions, it can allow that the antibody um, binding to the epitope uh, will, will, will happen, the, the, the interaction will happen much faster and better. And this is done where the, there is non-contact and controlled conditions of temperature. And when um, we look at ELISA preliminary results, we can see that if we incubate the samples um, with the Covaris AFA technology, the, um, the binding step is improved and um, much better than the normal uh, kit condition. So we were interested to see if we can use the same approach to, um, to, uh, to expedite and improve the process of antibody, antibody binding during the chip sequencing process. As I've mentioned, chip sequencing has multiple steps, and we use automation in order to do a systematic comparison. Um, so we looked at a variety of antibodies, and we compared the overnight conditions to the AFA one-hour incubation. And when we had um, the same cells and the same conditions, um, when we, there was a public data, we also compared it to the public data. And we looked at a variety of system modifications, such as A3K4 ME3, which has tight and narrow binding, A3K27 ME3, which is more broad and repressive, um, as you can see here. And you can, and, and also, um, Eastern acetylations that are broad. Uh, we looked at, um, Eastern A3K27 acetylation and CTCS. And we saw that using the FA, we had a very uh, similar um, maps to um, the public maps or the ones where we incubated overnight. And again, one of the beautiful things about the automation is that we can do everything in parallel where we take the exact same sample and either incubate it um, on the AFA or incubate it um, overnight, but everything else is exactly the same. And this allows us to look um, only on this change in the conditions. And when we look at um, on, it, on, it, on, uh, on the entire genome using 1KD beans, um, we can see that there is a really tight association between um, the overnight and the AFA conditions, showing that um, the process, while expedited, um, doesn't have any impact. Uh, we can see it also for K27 acetyl and CTCF. And if we focus only on the TSS, we can look at the signal to noise ratio. And one of the challenging histone modifications, A3K27, ME3, you can even see that the signal to noise ratio is improved, similar in A3K9 acetylation and CDCF. So these were really encouraging results, um, which allowed us to really consider that we can use this approach to move forward and, and really start um, thinking about how we can screen uh, conditions and make it in a much more fast and um, uh, reproducible manner. So to summarize, um, the AFA allows us to expedite the immunoprecipitation process um, from the overnight time that it takes to approximately an hour or less um, while improving or at least maintaining the signal to noise ratio of uh, the chip sequencing. Um, this is where we're developing a novel use of the AFA that would allow enhancing and simplifying the chip sequencing process. And we envision it that this could be highly useful 
um, for research and drug development and drug screening or for clinical diagnostic applications. Um, I want to thank um, the people that have led this work, um, which uh, Jonathan Young, which is now um, um, studying for MD, and um, Polo, which is an undergrad um, on his fourth year. Um, I, I want to thank Sharona, postdoc in the lab that has been helpful um, in uh, leading this forward, um, NSF and NIH, um, as well as other uh, funding agencies um, um, for funding, and Kovaris, uh, and in particular, Amid, that was a terrific collaborator in pushing this forward. So again, these are the conclusions, and I'm happy to take um, any questions.